brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Podcast. Uh, this week, it's a what you doing, and I'm here with Shirley. Hello. And Jesse. Howdy. Jesse. We're going to talk about what's going on in our lives that's <laughs> geeky and fun. Thanks, Shirley, for that scream at Jesse. <laughs> Let's get started with books. Shirley, yes. what have you been reading? Recently. Oh, I did finish The King in Yellow. Woo-hoo. It was a very, um, you guys will see a review on it, but it was very, it is a little disturbing in the way that he put it together. Okay. So that was very interesting. Then I um, restarted book one in the real time. Really? You're back yeah. at number one? <laughs> You're never going to yeah. finish that thing. The thing is, I started back over at one, and I'm now currently in book four. That's because he doesn't read I every do word. read everything. Please. <laughs> Stop it. I, 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 I do have a question for you. The yeah. King in Yellow. Is that the first... Lovecraftian sort of novel you've read, or yes. Before you drink, before you drink. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Before you read any other works based on his works, you should read some of his because I hate to say it, but his works aren't as good as the ones that were based on his world. Well, the, the thing is, the King in Yellow was written before Lovecraft was born. Yeah, it, Lovecraft. Oh, was it? Um, I thought he inspired it. Yeah. So he no, was inspired he by it? Have, yeah, he was inspired uh, by it. Yeah. Um, I haven't read it yet, but now that I know you're done with it all, it, since it's on Kindle, yeah. I'll, I'll read it. Um, but yeah, I, I read book two, three, uh, two and three since we last spoke, all of them, and most of book one. And now I'm like 10% into book four. And I keep, I'm being reminded how much I love this series and how fast it actually moves. Um, I know that five, six, and seven kind of slow down some. And I'm not looking forward to that, but these have been pretty pretty speedy. Um, I haven't really read anything else except for all the stuff I I just got a new job, so I'm reading all the stuff for that. That's fun. Um, I'm getting ready to. Um, I guess we're going back to Shirley. Oh, uh, the thing is, I didn't think that we finished. We just kind of started talking about. Um, darn it! I don't know how to find it. Can we go home? No, this is home. <laughs> I'm trying to find a book, sorry. What, what book are you looking for? I'm looking for the one that I read last Stolen year. Stolen Kingdom? Yeah, the Stolen Kingdom. Oh, there it is. So I'm getting ready to reread the Stolen Kingdom by um by somebody Ross. God, I can't remember. Ross Pro? No, no, not Ross Pro. Please don't do that. It is... Oh, there you go. I just want to see it. By uh, Ross Rosenfeld. And he also wrote a... Um, I think there's a... It's the first book in a trilogy. Um, and then he just um, released, I think it was last year, a Halloween book called The Halloween Ball which I'm getting ready to start reading, too. They're pretty easy readers, but they're very interesting, and they have a really good story. So, uh, that's my promotion. <laughs> so, I went over what I was reading. Jesse, what are you reading? What am I reading? Well, I'm going to cheat here, because what I'm reading is a uh, visual novel, which is a game with a lot of words, and not a lot of gameplay. No, no, no I allowed it last time. I'm not allowing this time. It's, what else it's are you no reading? Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And I'm just going to keep going because that's the only thing I've read. <laughs> oh. Okay. Are you, you know, uh, you could just skip this part. Be like, no, this oh, this is this is this is classified as a book to a lot of people. A form no. of like graphic novel. Are you reading any comic books, Jesse? Oh, actually, I did. Come to think about it, uh, Batman's War Crimes. I just stumbled across it at the library. Are you going to... Uh, so, Marvel's doing new number ones and resetting their world. I don't like that. Oh, Marvel is? Marvel. Okay, I might. Yeah, I was, I've also heard DC's thinking about doing a reset again also, and that drives me crazy. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they're, they're doing it. 
<laughs> but no, it, okay. it's called War Crimes. It's about Black Mask trying to frame Batman for getting another Robin killed. Oh, okay. That sounds terrible. Uh, it it is, <laughs> but it's it's told in a good way. <laughs> it, it, All right. Are you there? What me? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you were saying something. <laughs> yeah. What just happened? All right. Uh, I guess I'll stop to and crack. I'll start <laughs> on podcasts. Uh, I I picked up quite a few podcasts since we last talked. I'm listening to the 515 Fantasy Football Podcast, which is doing really well for me, since I am number one in my fantasy football league. Um, man, what else? Have, I guess I haven't been. I've downloaded a bunch. I haven't listened to much. Uh, the Anthology Podcast is pretty good. Um, unfortunately, there's been a little bit of lag between episodes, um, but that one's put out by the guy, one of the guys from Sess of Viewer. Um, it's all about the Twilight Zone. He's going through episode by episode. I think he does two episodes at a time. Um, I also downloaded... Oh, uh, The Memory Palace. And I listened to all of those in a very short amount of time. They're all uh, historical pod- or podcasts about historical things, kind of like Stuff You Missed in History Class. But they're all um, like less than 20 minutes, usually like two, two to five minutes long. So it's, a, it's one you can get through pretty quick. Uh, Jesse, are you listening to anything? Yeah, I'm listening to what I standard to listen to all the time, but I do have a new podcast on my rotation, and it's called One Shot. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it, it's an interesting podcast. I'm glad I stumbled into it. It's uh, they, they fall away from their business plan, I guess you'd call it, occasionally. The, the whole point of the podcast is like they play new game styles, and they do really short one-shot games. It tends to last two to three episodes. The guy really likes to tell a story, though, so he doesn't play games rules heavy. So sometimes it's not a good example of what the role playing setting is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we met one of those guys at Gen Con this year. They came to a panel, or no, they came to the podcast meet and greet. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it was good to meet them. Um, are you listening to anything about X Men? Um, I have fallen off that bandwagon. Why? I don't know. I. I... I have used that podcast to find other podcasts, so I'm just uh, kind of using it to find others, and I've just got stuck in one, so I'll go back to it eventually. Are you, are you listening to the Kaiju cast? No. But, uh, <laughs> that You'll hear about it eventually if you go back to Rachel and Miles' Explain the X-Men. It sounds like it's something to do with Pacific Rim. It, it has no. to do with Godzilla. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not bad then. Don't so, uh, anything else? Any of your regulars you want to highlight? Um, the VitaCast is always good uh, if you're one of the few people who actually own that handheld system. Okay. All right. Shirley, anything you're listening to? No. No? Nothing? I'm not going to be like Jesse and try to pretend that I'm listening to stuff. Oh, what? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Shirley, we'll start with you with games. Are you playing any games? Or pretending like you're playing any games? Um, To tell you the truth, with the new job, I really haven't had time. That's not true. We played a game. What did we, we play? played? Disaster Looms. But that wasn't. Oh, it was new. Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. I played Disaster Looms. So tell us about Disaster Looms, Shirley. Um, if I tell you about Disaster Looms, then I can't use it in a review. Yeah, you, you can. can. Go ahead. Okay, it's this really cool space game where um, each person has to. Um, it's competitive and points based. And each person has to take the Earth people off of an Earth that is getting ready to explode, implode. Something. Virus? Disaster. Something. It's some sort of disaster that's going to destroy the Earth. It's, it's looming. looming there. The disaster is. Looming. Like a loom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, loom. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, basically what it is, is you have these spaceships, and you can only move so far, but there's cards that are played that will add to um, different parts of the point system, as well as movability, and being able to give you things. You can either keep the cards for yourself and not let anybody else have the powers that they contribute to the game, or you can actually put them in a pool 
and then everybody gets the powers. So yeah, so you're basically it's very strategic. You're playing corporations, and you research new technologies. Those are the cards oh, that yeah. give you the powers, and you can sell them off to get to get more money, which allows you to buy more stuff um, and put them in public domain. But it's it's that's essentially the the idea of it. It's right. it's I don't know. It, it's very strategic in that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get all these people off of the earth and look at all these places that I have. And what I thought was the point of the game didn't give me as many points as you and Aiden got. So I yeah. missed the point well, of the game. I, I, I don't think you missed the point of the game. I think every time you play a game the first time, you have to see how it plays and what's good. I didn't know what was going to win. I wasn't sure what was going to be the surefire way to win. You get right. points for colonies. The idea is to take people from Earth and put them in colonies. Yes. And to hold those colonies for you. Right. Which sometimes is difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, so, yeah, it was just... Especially with other people attacking your colonies and yeah. taking over your people. Yeah. So it, it's it's a it's an intricate game. I like it quite a bit. It's from Break From Reality. Um, if you have If you happen to pick it up... Make sure you have version the rules version 2.0 because yeah. we have the version one and it's a little rough at points. Yeah, um, I, I find that with a lot of smaller comp- game companies that the first version of the rules is a little mm-hmm. on the rough side. So that's the game that I played. Sounds uh, like an interesting that's game one. That, yeah, that's the game that I played over. Well, it's been a couple since, weeks ago. Well, I mean, the last <clears throat> time we really, except for the LARP. Uh, I really yeah. haven't. We, we really played haven't Cthulhu done Realms since Gen Con. We played Cthulhu Realms since Gen Con. Well, that was that's about it. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. You, you, play, oh, no, you, you played play Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Well, nah. Uh, I said except for the LARPs. That's not, not a LARP. LARP. It's a tabletop RPG LARP. Mm. Live action. LARP. There's no no no. It's not live action. It's not live. We're all it dead. We're no. all sitting around live people. No, that's not, no. I know what it means. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I have been playing, I picked up a bunch of games for my iPad when we went to Ireland. So I've been playing. Which we didn't play at all. We did. We played Sentinels a couple of times. And we played a game of Carcassonne. Oh, we did play a game of Carcassonne. Um, I also picked up a couple of games we did not play, and I haven't played since, so whatever. Uh, but I've been playing those. I've been playing a lot of Civilization Four and a little bit of Fallout 3. Um, Civilization 4 just because I like Civilization but I really want to get into Fallout 3 enough that I want to play Fallout 4 but I don't have anything I can play it on currently so um, I want to go to you Jesse but first I want to talk about a game coming out have you seen the Mordheim game coming out from Steam? Yeah I was going to send you a comment about that you sent me a, uh, a, video? a video of it I, I... what did you think? really wish it was on something like an iPad, because it looks like a very interesting game, but it doesn't necessarily look like the kind of game that'll hold my attention while I'm at my computer where my other games are. Yeah, I, it's, um, I want to play it really bad. I really do. I don't think my computer will handle it, Not but, because it looks too pretty, and there's too much going on. Yeah, uh, there's but a it's, lot it's, going on. It's everything I wanted more time to be, without having to sit across the table from a person. So... I don't know. I, they, I, I, I feel like Blood Bowl, the new Blood Bowl, was good, or will be good. Um, and this is the kind, same kind of thing. They're just taking one of uh, Games Workshop's games and fixing it so it's playable uh, electronically. Right. Yeah, it no. almost didn't look like it was turn-based, though. And the game kind of seems like it would need to be turn-based instead of live action. No, it's turn-based, just like the, the miniatures game. Oh. You go by initiative and all that. Okay, good, good. Um, what are you playing, Jesse? What am I playing? Well, let me pull up. Oh, uh, for the Vita, I recently got Lego Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, I have been wanting to play a Lego game for a while because I keep hearing they're fun. And this is supposedly one of the best ones that came out. And it was incredibly good. It yeah. it plays through all four movies. And it's like watching the movie, but with more humor and less on-screen death, which I wonder yeah. how they do that also. But all the uh, the harsh scenes are kind of done off-camera, so if you've seen the movies, you know what happens. If you don't, it's kind of alluded to, but not really. The only yeah. drawback to the game is the gameplay, uh, the number of hours you get out of it. 
it only took me eight hours to beat the game and 12 hours to platinum on Sony, which means uh, 100% of what they intended the game to be. Okay. So, yeah. So you picked up all the all the blue bricks and yeah. all the whatever. So, yeah. yeah. I um, all the characters. I will say if you enjoyed that, you might go back and play Batman, Lego Batman or Lego Batman 2. Or the the Marvel superheroes, Lego Marvel superheroes, uh, those are good. And then if you can find the Lego Star Wars, that's the all six episodes. The, that one's decent as well. Okay. I'm currently playing uh, Lego Batman Two and enjoying it. Yeah. The, the only problem yeah. is I have to be a little careful because on the handheld they've toned down some, most of the gameplay uh, okay. to what the main game is. So there, any of them have a lot of open world gameplay. All the open world stuff's kind of been torn down into compartmentalized uh, zones. Yeah. So yeah. people have kind of warned me against things like Batman 3 because it was okay. basically based on being an open world kind of a game. I see. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to try it. But. Okay. Fair enough. Um, let's talk about apps real quick. Uh, I picked up Uber. Uber app is awesome. and Actually, I'm enjoying using Uber. We've used it a couple times uh, to get back and forth from a couple of places. Uh, I like it well enough. Uh, oh, I just started playing Angry Birds 2, and it's all right. It's better than Angry Birds because you get to choose your bird and how you use them, but it's still Angry Birds. I mean, it's just knockdown crap. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else? I've, oh, no, I've been playing Slay a lot. Yeah, I think you're addicted to that. I love that game. It's awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm almost to the point where I need to spend $10 oh, to get thank, all the extra So, levels. Jesse, I need to thank you for becoming a slay widow. <laughs> oh, whatever. You're not a slave widow. Are you kidding? If you're How anything... How you in that bathroom? That's reading sometimes. Yeah, this... If you go way I back... I have to walk in there. <laughs> you're playing that game. What did you say, Jesse? If you go way back on our website, I did a review of this, ga- this app a, little, a while ago. I had originally mm-hmm. had it for the Palm Pilot. And just absolutely loved it and could never remember what it was called and just stumbled on it on the iPad. And yeah, it, it, it's a really good game. Yeah. Um, Jesse, what apps are you playing? I would like to talk about two of them. One of them's a little expensive. I don't remember how much it cost, but I do remember it costing. So maybe $5. $5. But it was, it's <laughs> called uh, Prune. Okay. Oh. And it's uh, about trying to grow a bonsai tree in the darkness. Around a certain, you try to get it to grow up to a light. You have to prune it to get it to grow certain ways. If it hits like the side lands, it, it falls off. It, it's kind of a calming and relaxing game, but it still has that stressful feel to it every now and then. You're trying to work around stuff. Kind of yoga for your mind. Kind of, yeah. And there's like it's this. Th- it's three ninety nine in the iOS store. Like, like oh. I said, pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent thirty dollars on the uh, the Sentinels in the Multiverse game. <laughs> Oof. That yeah. <laughs> the other anyway, you were saying the other game is completely free, and it's called Loot and Legend. And I, I have absolutely fallen in love with this app. It's very reminiscent of, but what it is is it's a uh, top-down view on a role-playing game sort of a situation. It's got a lot of tongue-in-cheek comedy, um, and as you kill things, you get loot. It, it, it does have a premium access part of it. But haven't really found a use for it yet, but you get loot. Like, say you get a pair of magical boots. You equip the boots, and it gives you three cards that go into your deck on movement. You equip a sword, and it gives you four different kinds of attack that go into your deck for attacking. So each weapon has different kind of attack cards. Each, So it's kind of like a... Uh, uh, what do you call it when it's a non-collectible card game? A deck-building game? Yeah. In a sense, and a role-playing game on top, turn-based role-playing game on top of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not available on iOS that I see. It, um, on your iPad? Yeah. I don't, well, it's not available on my phone. Let me okay, it, it might not be on phone. I don't think it's on Android. So it's okay. very... Yeah, it's Loot and Legends. Okay. Surely... Any apps? Um, <clears throat> the only app that I'm really going to talk about um, is going to be uh, the amazing 
and magnificent um, Google Suite of apps. Um, Google Drive, Google Gmail. Uh, I've been using Sheets and Word Docs, and I love its shareability and integration, and um, you know, being able to download the forms <clears throat> and use it with Microsoft Suite um, is amazing. And I just this is with my work, so um, which I've been spending almost 12 hours a day at. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the one that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Um, it being, a, I'm able to access it on my phone um, at work. It goes across all platforms. So yeah, I'm kind of in love with that right now. Right on. Um, and we will start uh, TV and movies with Jesse. Okay. I, I have a few movies and TVs to talk about. First off, is Gotham season two started, and. I think it's stronger than the first season. That being okay, said, go easy because I just finished the first season. Okay. And I don't wanna... Okay. Go, go ahead. I just uh, don't want to. What? Yeah. Don't don't go to any fan sites because there's a lot of talk about certain things happening right now. No, I avoid those. But, anyway. Yeah. It, it's the first episode's a little rocky, but it picks up from there. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I did hear that Gordon lost his job again, and that bothers me. That bothered me right after. Yeah, it, it's like it, it's not even well explained. I mean, I, I, it, it seems like there was a large gap of stuff that could have happened, but then there's not in other pieces too. So I, I don't know what yeah. kind of time frame they were doing. Right on. Uh, so what else are you listening or watching? The other one was I watched uh, San Andreas, and I also watched San Andreas Quake by Asylum Films. San Andreas is the one with uh, Dwayne Johnson in it, uh-huh. and it is honestly on the lowest part of my movie list that I could ever find. It, it is easily one of the worst films I think I've ever watched. Really? It, it is the only film that I can honestly say that I've watched the Asylum film knockoff, and I thought it was leaps and bounds better than the, the main film it was based on. I didn't think San Andreas was that bad. It It didn't have... I, I just, I didn't care. And it seems yeah. like the kind of movie that makes you, you, you have to care about the characters. And they, they didn't give it to me. Fair enough. But yeah, if, oh, you, if you've seen that one and you even kind of liked it, you should watch San Andreas Quake. This is fair. Yeah, Shirley's got a good point. Go ahead, Shirley. Oh, I was just saying, and you can be wrong. You were wrong about Pacific Rim. It's yes. okay, Jesse. A solid point. In, in all fairness, at least Pacific Rim had heart. Does it, this this doesn't just even have talk. heart. No. I, you know, I, I kind of, I, I have to be on Jesse's side here. The Rock was okay, but the, well, the, the thing the, is, the, that's who he is. Well, like, but no, no, that's not. He, he, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not tearing down the Rock. The script itself. That's it. The writing was, was horrible. Was weak. And even you said it. Hey, how many more kinds of vehicles can they get into? Like they oh, just. Oh yeah. I mean, it just was not great. Oh, because we were talking about how it was like planes, trains, automobiles, and boats. Yeah. <laughs> But what, yeah. what's his one job? He's a rescuer. What's the one thing yeah. he doesn't do? He doesn't rescue, rescue anybody his but his family. Yeah. He, I thought he rescued the girl at the beginning. Well, that uh, was before the bad stuff happened. She probably died in the bad stuff because he didn't care about anybody else after that, which I can kind of understand. But still, it's his job. Dude, he should at least so have conflicting saying thoughts that about if it. If it was the zombie apocalypse or whatever type of horrific thing was going on here, you would not go for your family first. I would not specifically not help the people between me and my family. Especially oh, if it was so my job to help other people. Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of, I can see. Well, he, at least, they helped that old couple. I can at least see where he's coming from. I mean, there's that. He, and and he, they did save that old couple. They, yeah, they only, yeah. They only helped the old couple because the old couple had something for them. They had originally passed the old couple and then came back and seen them still there. Yeah, right. I mean, I get what he's saying. Surely, or was that it, Jesse? Yeah, that's it. Okay, Shirley, movies, TV? Um, well, we're still doing the West Wing thing. Yeah. Um, just finished up season two of Holly Ber- Halle Berry's Extant, and uh, that was amazing. Um, I'm very sad to see that they're not renewing for a third season, but um, I read... I read up on it, and Halle Berry is very happy with where they left it because she was the producer. 
Fair enough. So, um, if you like intriguing sci-fi, um, most of the time leave you on the front of your seat type of um, uh, TV series, Extant is definitely for you. Um, the writing is pretty good, but there's, I think some of the acting leaves a little bit to be desired. I think if if the story wasn't something that I was pulled into and that I wanted to hear about, I probably wouldn't have stayed on for both seasons. Fair enough. Um, so. You're, yeah, you're caught up on yeah. Once Upon a Time? Uh, yeah, to this season. Like, this season just started in September. Yeah. So, I haven't watched any of the episodes, um, for Once Upon a Time okay. this season. Um, I'm still wanting to watch, uh, Once Upon a Time Neverland and Once Upon a Time Wonderland? Wonderland? Wonder, and yeah, Neverland, Wonderland. I think, maybe. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. I think that's it. I mean, we've been working so much yeah. that I really haven't had time to like um, I power watch anything. Watched the new season of the league. I'm still behind on that. I need to get back into it. Yeah, was, was that what you were watching the other day about the drug dealer? No. I say that sounds like it could be the league. <laughs> no, no. Uh, and then I, uh, so I started Bam Breaking Bad about two years ago two and a half years ago, um, and got into the middle of the third season. And the second and third season are very depressing and rough. Yeah. And I finally got myself out of the third season. I watched the fourth season in about two weeks, um, purposely like watching an episode and stopping. Um, and it was fantastic. I was very impressed with the fourth season. And now I'm in the fifth season, and I know it's wrapping up, and it's it's a little... I don't know. It's just not moving fast enough, and they're going to throw a wrench in everything, and I can see it coming, and I just don't like that. I don't know what the wrench is going to be. I just know that it's going to go bad. So I'm in season five of that, and that I'm, I'm impressed. I watched all of season one of Gotham. Um, it had its moments where it was okay. It had its moments where it was good, and then it had some iffy moments. I really could have done without the fish, Mooney, on Crazy Island storyline. Yeah, I could have done without fish, Mooney, completely, but... No, I mean, she had a point, and I would have had a no problem with her getting thrown out of Gotham, or having to flee Gotham. Spoilers, by the way. Um, having to flee Gotham and then showing back up. We just didn't need to know what was going on with her. Or, if you wanted to tell what was going on with her, it didn't need to be half of every episode for half the season. Yeah. Um, so we'll see where that one goes. Season 2, I haven't started Season 2 yet. But um, it was okay. It was pretty good. Um, what else have I been watching? I've been watching Friends, because I never watched all of Friends, except I think I've seen most of these, and I just didn't realize it. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Friends. I can't do it. I know. Oh, really? Um, yeah. It, it's one of them I can watch episodes of, randomly, because I think yeah. that's the way I originally watched yeah. them, but I can't watch it, like, a series. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's no. something I, I have not had any luck benching, so. Zoics. Um... I think that's what I've been watching, though. I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, we watched all of the Lord of the Rings, except we watched uh, Fellowship and Two Towers in their extended cut. But we didn't watch uh, Return of the King that way. We don't own the extended cut for that one. Yeah. So um, that was interesting. I haven't watched all those in one day in a long time. Oh, we didn't watch them all in one day. Yeah, we, we did. watched. Uh, um, yeah, we watched like Fellowship half of, of the, the Fellowship and then the other two in one day. Over like three <laughs> days, and then on the weekend we watched the. Other That's two. what we went and saw. We went to the sci-fi night at the art. Oh shop. my gosh! How can we? And that I because... saw Invasion of the Body Snatcher, the original Invasion of the Body Snatcher. Uh -huh. Never saw that. It was pretty okay. It wasn't like fantastic, but I can see why it was a big deal when it came out. What did I see next after that that you missed? Forbidden Planet. Why Forbidden do I have Planet to tell you with that? the introduction of Robbie the Robot and it was pretty okay. It was uh, essentially the... Jesse, have you seen Forbidden Planet? Yeah, it's been a long time ago. I say, if you like the, the original season of Star Trek, you should watch it again because it's essentially a Star Trek episode. Oh, is it? Nice. It's a little slower in points, but like literally, it's it's a Star Trek episode. And then we watched Planet of the Apes. Yep, and, uh, which was amazing. Well, yeah, I love Planet of the Apes. I absolutely... It was the only movie I'd actually ever seen. 
And the last movie we saw was Night of the Living Dead, which I had never seen before. I had never seen it before either, and, and it was... Spoiler, uh, that jaw, that ending was jaw-dropping. Yeah, it have was... You, have you seen it, Jesse? Phenomenal. I, like I said, I think I have. It, it, you need to go back and watch it. It was crazy. It crossed <laughs> so many social... Uh, yeah, political social lines uh, at the time that I was just like, whoa. Um, it's uh, it's like every zombie trope ever, but it's like creating them as it goes. Yeah, I mean it's 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 like it's hey, the first zombie movie. Uh, you know that zombie trope? Yeah, we haven't created it yet. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> so um, it's it's clearly <laughs> an indie film. It's not like high production, but it's no. pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and suspenseful. It's pretty, Wasn't pretty it by an unknown cast? Yeah, it was an unknown cast, unknown uh, director. It was mm-hmm. tiny, tiny budget. It was really, really impressive. So I, I was very impressed by that. Those, the I wish I we'd seen more, but it was just too long of a day, and the night before was just too busy because um, they showed War of the Worlds and the original Godzilla. Man, I would have loved to see and then the Worlds. There was a an indie film called Gila, not the original Gila that they showed from 2012. So yeah, we we I enjoyed those. Yep, those are pretty good. Uh, does that wrap us up for what you're doing? Because I want to touch on something else real quick. Does anybody else have anything they want to mention before have we, we hit all the, yeah. the movies and TV? Categories? Have you guys gotten around to watching the last of the uh, Hobbit series? No. No, Matt won't the, let me. I need we you. watched this. Why? I need what? you guys to hurry up and watch that one so I can complain about it. Oh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, yeah, we may be watching the Hobbit trilogy sometime soon. Cause yeah. I would, I would like to just get it done with. <laughs> I want to yeah. buy the extended Blu-ray version. Oh, you don't now. need to make that any longer than it already is. <laughs> You know what? I will make it as long as I want to. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I think moving. Peter Jackson did a great job on the extended version. Yeah, we're gonna move on now before Jesse goes Whatever. off. Uh, moving on to the movie draft, Jesse. I know you weren't uh, involved this year, which we're very sad about. Yeah, well, it gives someone else a chance to win. Uh, the, the, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whatever. This would be year four. I Whatever. have won three, two of the three years, and now I've won this year. So I won again. Team wins a lot. Basically, Matt only wanted to talk about this because no, no, I promised our listeners that we would do a wrap up. Um, Vanity goeth before the fall. Dude. We did see a lot of movies move out of the summer. A ton. Um, Moon and Our Stars. I don't think it's been given a new. Um, or the Moon and the Sun hasn't been given a new oh, release no. date. Yeah, I was going to say Fault um, in Our Stars was. Neither has Boo, but Bureau of Otherworldly Operations. Which is the sequel to R.I.P. No, it's not. It's just another movie just like R.I.P.D. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a clear ripoff. Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the, the Green Legend didn't get any data, but technically was released in August, technically, but not really. I don't know what happened there. And then Pan and Point Break, Pan got moved to October, Point Break got moved to December, and then Criminal got moved to 2015. 2016 in April. Wow. Whoa. So we had five movies, six six movies that just moved. And like, literally half of my movies moved. And he still won. I still I won. I mean, <clears throat> a yeah, ridiculous but... amount of big head gloating. Yeah, Jurassic World was a cheap though. It, yeah, it wasn't a cheap. So. But let's, so let's look real quick. So Team Wacha um, had Pitch Perfect 2, uh, Terminator Genesis, Ant-Man, Pixels, and the Transporter refueled, which I would have thought had done better, but he came in dead last. Um, How did we not see the t- next Transporters movie? Transporter? Transformers movie. Transporter. Oh, Transporter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a uh, difference. Pitch Perfect Two did 183 million, which you know that's that's acceptable. Terminator Genesis did terrible, 89 million. Ant Man did 177. Uh, Pixel did 76. See, that would have hurt uh, me, because I'd have took it, yeah. too. Uh, Transporters Refueled only did 15 million. Like, like that's terrible. Um, which would... J- Jason Statham must be pissed off about that. Well, it, it wasn't Statham. Yeah, he wasn't Statham? in that one. He wasn't in it. That's why it did so bad. That's why it did so yeah. badly. 
Uh, Gaming with Scott had The Moon and the Sun, Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, Avengers Age of Ultron, Hitman 47, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or, yeah, The Green Legend and Criminal. The last two movies of his moved, uh, and the first movie of his moved, which means he was riding on the backs of Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2. Which was a good movie. Avengers. Yeah, but it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a heavy hitter. No. Um, and Hitman 42, Hitman Agent 47 was not a heavy hitter. So he really just had Avengers, uh, which put him in fifth place. Um, he had uh, so Watcha had 543 million. Gaming with Scott had 551 million. Uh, fourth place was Fool's Mask. He had Furious Seven, which was, did really well. Although I, he ended up paying more than he should have, but that's that's what happens. Um, San yeah, Andreas. Try to take somebody out of the game. Yeah, uh, San Andreas uh, did okay. But then Boo uh, got moved, and Spy did not do well, and he only had those four movies. Um, Teen Moonstar, oh, and he ended up with $616 million, so only $60 million away from Scott in fifth. Teen Moonstar, that's Shirley. Uh, she had Hot Pursuit, which did okay. Mad Max Fury Road did really well. Ted 2 kind of bombed. Uh, Minions did really well. And then The Man from U.N.C.L.E. did mediocre. Uh, she ended up with $647 million. Um, uh, which, you know, that's not bad. Uh, sequel rebooters was Phil. He had Poltergeist, Inside Out. Poltergeist did okay. Inside Out did really well. Magic Mike kind of bombed. Mission Impossible did okay. But then he had Fantastic Four as one of his other temple movies, and it bombed. Real bad. Real, real bad. Um, he had 714. People were talking down about it. What? People were talking down about it. it it's not a good movie. I'll be the judge of what is a good movie or not in my book. If it had done what it was supposed to, he would have won. I mean, it's just, he had $714 million, mm-hmm. uh, which is like $70 million ahead of Shirley. So, I mean, these were decently close intervals between each each person. Yeah. yeah. And then I had 70, $775 million, so I'm only $60 million up from where, where uh, Phil's at. If, if Fantastic Four had done what it was supposed to, he would have blown me out of the water. But I had... Te- Tomorrowland, which didn't do well, Entourage, which did terrible, and Pan and Point Break moved, and I honestly all my money came to, from Jurassic World. That's that I, I really did not have a good lineup. Yeah, like um, I said, that that just that was a rare thing, though. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that makes uh, me the 2015 winner for summer. I don't think we're having a winter draft since it's we're in the middle of October. We should have started a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we'll skip the winter league again, but then we'll do another summer 16. Um, hopefully we'll get bring back a couple of people. Maybe Jesse will actually grace us with his presence. If we can do it over Skype, it won't be a problem. Uh, if you could come, maybe. Here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it was a good it was a good season. Uh, I I was surprised in a couple of places. Um, I expected movies to do better. I I even though I didn't want to see Fantastic Four, I expected it to do better than it did. Um, but the, the, the race, the, the, the space between first and last was really only about 200 million, which is not, it, that's like one, one good, really good movie or two pretty decent movies. So it really was a decently close race. Any thoughts, guys, anything from the summer you were, you, you thought was great or thought was terrible or what you would have seen? Well, like I said, Paul Blair too really surprised me. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting much when I watched it. Yeah. But the fact that it actually took the time to wrap up things from the first movie realistically. Yeah. Uh, kind of looking forward to a third if they do it. Fair enough. Um, according to our stats, Jurassic World did the best by uh, dollar spent per point earned, or point spent by dollar earned, and Transporter Refueled did worst. Uh, I, I made $16 million per dollar spent. For Jurassic World and Transporter Refield made a dollar or a million per dollar spent, so it was a little million and a half. It was a little rough. Any thoughts from the summer, Shirley? Any movies you wish you would have seen or thought you would have would have done better? All of them. Jupiter Rising. Ju- <laughs> oh, Shirley's still bitter from last uh, summer. I finally, I finally got around to watching that movie too. Well, part of it, I couldn't finish it. I liked it. It was good. I did. You like about no. it. It, it, it tried to it tried to do too much. Too much of what? Everything. If it had picked one plot, it would have been better. Instead of nah. like seventeen things it tried. 
No, I think it was fine. I think it did great. She, the only plot is they were trying to subvert the the um, <clears throat> the um, proper matriarchy. That's the only plot there was. I, I never even got far enough to know there was a matriarchy. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, that's that's your fault. You didn't stick around. Uh, anything else before we wrap it up, guys? Sweet. You guys are so talkative. Yeah. All right. Well, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can go over to our website and sign up for our newsletter on the right-hand side. You can go over to iTunes. You should definitely give us a five-star rating and say nice things about us because we love hearing from our fans. We do. We You can go over to the website and read all of our reviews about Slay and Shirley's upcoming review about The King in Yellow and other things like Disaster Looms and such. Loom. Looms. Um, like a loom. And you can find our shirts over at Slash Loot, and we will talk to you guys real soon. Peace out. And that's it tonight for us on the Nerds Domain Podcast. You can always send us an email at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter. Matt is at quiet. Scott is at underscore Big Daddy T underscore. Johnny is at Fool's Mask. Justin is at J underscore Kimmet. And Shirley is at SNED70. Or the website at Nerds Domain. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerds domain we want to thank john shop for our music if you'd like to help us out head over to the website and buy something through our amazon link it's the same price you always pay but a little bit comes back to us if you enjoy our podcast we encourage you to give us a review on itunes and let us know what you think we also have t-shirts available over at slash loot.com at tinyurl.com slash shirts we'll talk to you real soon